What we're intending to do is to reimpose the constraints that put Iran's nuclear program in a box. The limits on enrichment, the limits on stockpile, the intensive verification measures. There are many more things that Iran wants in the way of sanctions relief that go above and beyond what's in the original Iran nuclear deal. So we will come to the table, not just with sanctions leverage, but with a united front of the world powers. There is high tension between Iran and the United States. Iran has now enriched uranium to the 60 percent mark. That's a major jump in getting closer to the 90 percent level needed to make a nuclear weapon. That is now rattling those indirect talks between Iran and Washington and probably makes you wonder why there is discussion about reviving the old nuclear deal. Even the New York Times warns the best anyone can hope for with Iran is pretty bad. Joining me now, former Secretary of State and former Director of the CIA, Mike Pompeo, a Fox News contributor. Welcome to you, Mr. Secretary, and happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to you too, Trey. What leverage, if any, does the United States have with Iran, and what in the world is John Kerry doing? <laughs> Well, Trey, we left a, a lot of leverage for this administration, uh, a couple of thousand sanctions on the Iranian leaders and the Iranian economy. Uh, we built out a coalition of Gulf states and our friend and ally Israel, all working to keep containment on Iran, to prevent them from having the money, the resources, the tools, all the things we saw. You remember when they flew pallets of, pallets, pallets of cash to Iran a few years back. This administration was given an enormous amount of leverage to put pressure on the Iranians. You can see, you talked about their enrichment. You can see that they are in firm, firmly committed to putting pressure back on the United States so they'll get more concessions at the table. Just this week, they elected a fellow named Ibrahim Raisi as their new leader. He's got the blood of thousands of people on his hands. This is not someone we ought to be talking to. It's not a regime that we ought to be engaged with. We ought to continue the maximum pressure campaign and force this regime to change its behavior. You know, Mr. Secretary, I think what, what, what vexes people is they hear you say that and they believe you, and they wonder why certain administrations are so insistent on negotiating with Iran. I mean, you see these rockets flying into Israel that are not Hamas rockets, they're Iranian rockets. <laughs> Why are we so heck bent on sitting down at the table with Iran? You know, Trey, uh, I, I try to look at the other side's arguments and make logic out of them. I, I can often understand what others think. They simply have a different set of priorities. This one, I cannot figure out. It is completely befuddling to me to think for a moment that the New York Times would say what they did. Remember, the Iranians and the Russians are salivating at the chance of us lifting sanctions on the Iranian regime when your friends, the Gulf states and Israel, are on one side and your adversaries, the Chinese and the Russians, are on the other. The, the logic just doesn't add up. I can't lay out their case for them, Trey. I, I do not understand it. Well, if the guy who finished number one in his class at West Point is having a hard time understanding the other side of the argument, you know there's no chance I'm going to understand it. So I'm going to switch to another country. North Korea, uh, when I was in the House, the most closed off country that we seem to know the least about. Uh, what is going on with North Korea? Should we be concerned? What is the, the state of their leadership? It's a great place to turn after talking about Iran. Imagine an Iran with a nuclear weapon and a nuclear weapons program, a country much bigger than the North Koreans. It would pose an enormous threat. The North Koreans, too, pose a real threat. They have a nuclear capability. We, we worked really hard, Trey. We broke a lot of glass. The president went to Singapore and then Hanoi and then met Chairman Kim again at the border at the DMZ. We, we weren't able to get him to give up his nuclear weapons stockpile. We got him to stop nuclear testing. We got him to stop long-range missiles and long-range missile testing, but it's not enough. There's an awful lot of work to do. That country has been racked with COVID. It's been racked with an enormous economic problems from uh, a bad weather, not enough rain, a drought inside of the country. But make no mistake about it, there is still work to do with respect to North Korea. Let me keep going around the globe because I have the former Secretary of State and the former head of CIA and a guy that was on House Intel. Uh, let's go to China. What, what are the prospects of us ever finding out the real origin of COVID-19 
And if you were sitting across the table from them, what leverage do we have to make them cooperate with an investigation? Well, Trey, it's going to be difficult because the Chinese Communist Party doesn't want us to know what happened there. They began the cover up at least by early January of 2020 for sure. Uh, so it's going to be hard. Uh, someday there'll be some brave Chinese person sneak out with the documents, with the paperwork, with the logbook from the lab, uh, whatever it takes for us to know. I, for myself, have seen enough. I think the most likely case is it came from this laboratory and then the Chinese Communist Party covered it up. They were conducting bioweapons research there. That this is, this is really dangerous stuff. As far as I know, that lab is still operating. And so we should, trade to your second question, we should use every tool that we have available. We have many. It, it started for us with getting out of the World Health Organization, an institution that utterly failed in the one job that it had, preventing a pandemic. At the moment of crisis, at the crunch point, they sided with Xi Jinping and the Chinese Communist Party and not with the world and their mission statement. So leave the WHO, leave the Chinese to their own in that regard, and build out an institution that can actually prevent against a pandemic. But we have lots of economic tools. You know, the Chinese leadership tray loves nothing better than to have their children study in our schools or their wives come shop here in the United States. We, we have lots of ways to impose real costs on the Chinese Communist Party. Well, Mr. Secretary, thank you for all of the, the, the many contributions and the many forms of service you have made to our country. And thank you for coming on uh, on Father's Day. Uh, I hope I see you soon. Thank you, Trey. So long. Have a good Father's Day. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.